Hi, today I'm going to talk about measuring. You need to be able to measure your art before you can frame it. You need to know what size your artwork is going to be in order to determine what size the glass is going to be in order to determine what size the frame is going to be. I find that quite a lot of my students get stuck at this very first step. Plain old measuring. So tonight we're going to look at measuring some photographs. Ultimately, if I'm framing a flat piece of artwork, a photograph, a print, and I'm going to put a border onto it, this mount that goes around the outside, I would like to be able to measure what goes into the space here, which we call the aperture. So there are two stages. One is, how big is this aperture? And the second stage is, how big is the border? And tonight, first stage, I'm going to look at the aperture. Simple as that. Now, when we're framing pictures, quite a lot of artwork is attached like this. In other words, it's attached loose in two spots along the top. Not a whole long piece of tape that goes all the way around it and freezes it down, not stuck down with glue. But if we attach it with a hinge like this, it can be reversed. In other words, I can remove it out of this mount and reframe it, and it's less damaging and invasive on the artwork. These are T-hinges, but we'll come back to those another day. So what I'm trying to do is measure this art so that when I close that book mount, the, the aperture over the top of it, it doesn't fall through the hole. So there's no piece of the art that sticks out the edges. And the Fine Art Trade Guild in the UK says that we should have five millimetres that is trapped by this mount board. So the very first stage is to look at a photograph or a painting that fills the page. In other words, it's edge to edge. Now, I want the whole piece to be framed. I want a mount to go around the outside of it. So I need to make sure my mount comes over the edge by at least five millimeters. So at the very basic level, working with measuring, we're going to take the whole image and then reduce it by five millimeters to find the aperture. So I mentioned that there are two numbers that I'm looking for. One is the aperture and one is the glass size. The aperture is that part of the artwork that I can see. The hole in the middle, the window, the little piece that the artwork sticks through. That's the aperture. And typically what I do is measure the whole size of this photograph. I'm right up against the edge of the photograph and I'm measuring that and this one is 296. So the number is 296 millimeters. And I'm going to take five mils of each side. In other words, I'm going to less it by 10. So instead of 296, I'm saying that that's 286. We're talking millimeters. By, and now I'm going to look at the height. So again, it's the whole height. And in actual fact, what I should be doing is not even putting it onto the artwork next to the artwork here. The whole height, two, 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 less five millimeters each side. In other words, two, 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 less 10 is two, one, two. So you'll notice that I'm not even writing down the size of the photograph. I'm only writing down the dimensions that I'm actually going to be working with. 286 by 212. Let's have a look at another photograph. This one here, full photograph. I would measure the whole piece, top to bottom. Same on the sides, reduce it by five millimeters each side. I'm going to look at and use the whole piece of art. 
Let's look at this chap. You'll notice that there are white borders on this photograph. Now the white border is very little in this particular picture. And so this border here, I'm not that concerned about. But if this white border was larger, for example, in this photograph here, they've given more white border on it, then I might be concerned that if I come in by five millimeters, that in fact some of that white will be observed. So in this case, my concern is that I need at least five to be trapped by the mount, but possibly I could come in by a few millimeters and say, actually, I'm going to work with my rulers just inside that measurement there to just inside the measurement here, I'm going to take 230. So I'm not going to take the 245 that it is, minus 5 each side, which is 235. Because 235 is very close to on the white border there. And so I don't want that. I'm going to come inside a little bit into the color and inside a little bit into the color. And in this case, I would use 230. Same on the length. If I took the full length here, and again, the full length is 295. So if you used my rule, 295 plus 5 each side is 285. If I put the ruler on for 285, well, that would work in this case. 285 is fine because there is not quite so much white top and bottom here. So I can go with the 285. I'm going to try and exclude that white. Let's look at this one here as our last example. Now I could take the whole picture size from left to right, the 305. Subtract five each side, so 295. In other words, I'm coming in by five millimeters on each side to overlap the artwork with the border that's gonna go on top of that. But I don't like this dark at the top. I find it distracting. And the other thing is that the artwork is placed, or the, the focal point is placed pretty much in the center of the picture. So what we could do is consider changing the shape of the artwork. Now you don't need to have boards like I have, the chevrons that I've got. You could just use pieces of paper and line them up and say, what happens if I lost that dark piece there? I'm still going to keep the um, close to the bottom here. Maybe keep the picture as wide as possible. There are some interesting flowers on the side here. And it sets the zebra off to the left hand side. Now, when I measure, I'm going to measure this opening here. I'm going to measure that it's 222 two, two in this instance, not the full 305, less 5 each side. So I'm actually going to reduce the size and work on the 222. Maybe I need to pull him over a tiny bit more and pull this out a tiny bit more so that there's more space on that side than that. The only thing that I'm making sure of is that there is an overlap here. There's plenty of overlap there. And there's plenty of overlap here, I do know that. So here, 230 would be my aperture. So for this piece here, for this little zebra example, the aperture is 230. And the height of this is 175. Let's just check that. But if I'm covering there by five, and I'm covering the dark portion here at the top, it's 170. So I've got for the second piece, for the zebra, the aperture there is much smaller than the aperture for the one above, although the photographs are the same size. I hope this little exercise was useful for measuring.